This lesson deals with network function design. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 11, starting on page 17. Finding and using a network function of a given circuit is an S-domain analysis problem. An S-domain synthesis problem involves finding a circuit that realizes a given network function. For linear circuits, an analysis problem has a unique solution. A synthesis problem usually has more than one solution, and we can consider things like cost and performance in comparing one design to another. Let's go back to ECE 201. In chapter four, we looked at op-amp circuits, and let's take a look at the same material now with impedances. Those have an impedance Z1 and Z2, and suppose that I know the value of those, and I know the value of the input. Having feedback around an op-amp, we'll assume that the circuit is stable, and it will drive this voltage to zero. There's no current entering or leaving here because there's a very high resistance between these terminals. In fact, there's really an impedance between those two terminals. Let's even solve for V out in terms of V sub S and then create a model for the circuit. The unknowns here are V out and I1 and I2. I do know that I1 equals I2 because there's no current flowing into the op amp. If I go around this loop, the rise in voltage is V sub S. The drop is going to be equal to I1 times Z1 plus the drop of zero. So I could solve for the current I1 and be equal to V sub S divided by Z1. Now if I go around this loop over here, the rise in voltage is zero. The drop is I2 times Z2 plus the drop of V0. I could use that to solve for I2. It's going to be equal to a minus V0 divided by Z2. I1 equals I2, so I could set this result equal to the previous result. And now I could solve for V out. So V out would equal a minus V sub S times Z2 divided by Z1. That's shown over here. So the output is determined by the input and the value of these impedance with a minus sign. You can construct a model of a voltage controlled voltage source where the output now is dependent on those variables. Now what about the input? Well, when you apply a voltage, a current flows was equal to V sub S over Z1. So I could use that to create a model. So just multiplying the Z1 over here and bringing the I1 over here, the ratio of V sub S to I1 is just Z1. It looks like there's an impedance Z1 back to ground. And this is shown on the next page. Our model for an inverting amplifier is an impedance Z1 a voltage control voltage source with a gain of minus Z2 over Z1 times V sub S. Same result we had in ECE 201, except that now R1 is replaced by Z1 and R2 is replaced by Z2. Now, since the ratio of Z2 to Z1 is our transfer function, it'd be nice if we had some way of taking and creating these impedances. What's shown below is a circuit developed by Ron Foster way back in the 1920s, taking a partial fraction expansion, expressing it as a circuit. Let me just state his result and then I'll show you why it's true. Z of S is equal to the sum of these elements in series. So I've got a resistor here I'll call K of infinity. These two in parallel would be the sum of their admittances and then the reciprocal would be the impedance. Admittance of this term is just P1 over K1 and the admittance of this term is S times C, which would be S times one over K1. Likewise, for the second term all the way through the nth term and then lastly, a single capacitor whose impedance would be one over its admittance, which would be S times the value of C, which is one over K zero. Multiply through by K1, getting a K1 divided by S plus P1. Likewise, K2 divided by S plus P2 all the way through K sub N divided by S plus PN. Bring the K zero up into the numerator. What we've got then is a partial fraction expansion of an impedance expressed as a circuit where the resistances are either the residues or the residues divided by a pole, and the value of the capacitance is the reciprocal of the residues. Thus, if we have a proper fraction expansion of Z of S, we can create or synthesize a circuit. In some of these instances, the K sub I's could be zero, and that would correspond to a capacitor whose value is infinite. But all that means is that it looks like a short circuit for all frequencies except DC. And this is network function design.